uh, but we won't be recording uh, yeah. the workshop. Okay, so as I just said, I'm Air Nicholson Clasby. I use they them pronouns and I'm the project manager for the Voice and Influence Partnership. I work for the Care Forum and we lead the project and we also deliver its BME work. Um, and we've organized this event jointly um, with the other organizations in the partnership, which are the Amadown Center, who deliver our, our multi-faith work, Bristol Older People's Forum, who lead our work for older people, um, OTR, who deliver our LGBTQ plus work, and Wessel, who are our lead for disability. We also have our advisory partners um, in Center for Deaf and Hard of Hearing People, Sari, Stand Against Racism and Inequality, um, and Bosca. Um, and we came together as a partnership to help make sure that individuals, groups and communities whose voices aren't always heard are listened to and are part of shaping Bristol's future. Um, so before we get on to the main part of today's event, a few more quick things from um, me to mention and then I'll hand over um, to myself, sorry. <laughs> I just had a message. I'm doing the tech today as well as posting uh, pop up, right, okay. Uh, housekeeping. The event is British Sign Language Interpreted. You should be able to see the BSL interpreters on screen throughout. Um, if you can't, you can pin them or put a message in the chat and we'll try to help with that. Um, as I said earlier, the first part of the event is being recorded so that we can share it more widely um, and with people who couldn't attend today. Um, we'll stop the recording before the workshop uh, section. The chat is open, and so if you could put your name and the organisation you're from, if that's relevant, um, into the chat, that would be really great and just help us know um, at the end of the event who was here with us. Um, and then just a general thing, um, as I'm sure won't be relevant, but um, we, we always say both for in the chat and in the workshop section, we ask that everyone is respectful of others and appropriate in responses and language. Um, this is a public event and we reserve the right to moderate and manage responses um, and to ensure that everyone can take part in a way that's appropriate and safe. So the first part um, of this event is um, a, a bit about our community funds. Um, the VIP community funds were something that we felt as a partnership really exemplifies what we're trying to achieve, um, particularly over the last year and a half of our work. Um, so I'm just going to share my screen. Uh, yeah. Uh, Pins is struggling to see the interpreters and pins not working. Is there anything we can do so yeah. that we can access them? Yeah. So hopefully that should be more visible. No, nope, that's not done anything. That's better, thank you, he said. Great, okay, it's yeah, working now, thank you very now, much. Yeah, thank you. Okay, um, Paul and Nikki, I'll just need you to, to swap your spotlighting between you. Okay. Right, here we go. Okay, so VIP community funds. Um, we created five community funds, one for each of the equalities communities we work with. Uh, Black Minority Ethnic BME Fund was delivered by the Care Forum. Disabled People's Fund was delivered by Wessel. Uh, People of Faith Fund was delivered by the Amadown Centre, uh, the LGBTQ Plus Communities Fund was delivered by OTR, and the Older People's Fund was delivered by Bristol Older People's Forum. The first grants were awarded at the start of 2020, uh, not long before lockdown, um, and the groups who had already been given a grant um, and the partners were really brilliant in adapting, so we were able to carry on um, moving a lot of what was planned online. Mm -hmm. We delivered a range of micro grants, which were in value between 250 and 600 pounds. In total, over 15,000 pounds of funding was delivered direct to 38 projects um, through 36 different organizations. 
And here you can see a list of organizations and projects funded. Um, to keep us on track, I'm gonna move through them quite quickly, but I wanted to give you an idea of the range of work that was being done. Um, so some points about the community fund model that we created. The fund started as a community pot project that was completed by OTR, our LGBTQ plus partner. Um, and we then developed this into the community funds model um, and used the first round of our BME fund as a sort of pilot, which was delivered by the Care Forum. Uh, the central VIP team worked to create template resources that could be adapted by each partner to suit their community. Uh, this included the application process, which was online and paper-based, um, applicant guidance documents that hopefully gave everyone everything they needed to know to apply, uh, a grant agreement, we still asked people to sign a formal agreement, um, and a reporting process and form. And we felt that as well as this approach being a key part of partnership working, um, it also reduced the time and resources that would have been needed if each partner had developed their own process from scratch. Um, it also gave the partners flexibility to adapt their funds for their community. Um, and one example of this was the work done by Hannah, who led for Wessel. Um, she reimagined all elements of the funding process, um, making the entire thing easy read. She created a training and empowerment program so a group of disabled people could come together to lead the grant process while also gaining a whole range of new skills themselves. So that was just one example of the way in which the partners were able to take the core model and resources and make them work for the communities that they were delivering for. So some key elements of the VIP community fund model that we felt stood out. Um, it was really important to us that it was open to the widest possible range of applicants. We were very conscious that some small and micro organizations are not able to apply for funding due to not being formally incorporated or just for some of the other reasons that means that a small organization can't meet other common funding criteria. Um, the size of the micro grants meant that the process could be simplified um, and that we felt comfortable reducing the requirements normally attached to funding. Um, the reporting and delivery expectations were also set to be proportional to the grant size as well. We very much wanted to make it a relationship of trust rather than one of requirements and tick boxes. Uh, the next key element for us was capacity building. The funds were aimed at small organizations and we knew some of those would be ones that had previously not gone through a grant funding process. Um, and so we designed our process to include all the key elements, uh, funding application and awards. Uh, processes normally do. And one of the aims of this was that by taking part, applicants and those who were successful would gain experience and confidence, hopefully, to then apply for larger and more complex funding processes and opportunities. Um, and we were also looking to provide some support to organisations who got grants where they needed it to help them and help with their development as an organisation. Um, small amounts of money to help make bigger things happen. Um, we were very aware that the amounts of money we were giving out are comparatively very small, um, but we saw it much more as seed money, um, not any expectation it would necessarily be full cost funding for something. We very much wanted the money to be something that could help an idea happen or extend existing work or give someone the chance to do something that traditional funding wasn't available for. Um, and I think a really core cool thing for me and for the project was actual things happening um, and creating a halo effect. Um, as a project, we believe that small visible impacts for our communities is a central part of what we needed to deliver. Um, and very much that through things actually happening for people and in communities, a halo effect is achieved. So it's not just the impact of that specific piece of funded work, but the way that an idea can spread or develop, it can be shared or replicated through networks um, and connections and the empowerment and engagement that's achieved by people actually seeing activity happen and something tangible take place. Um, so that's, that's really whistle stop quick tour through the community funds. Um, we will be publishing a report uh, later in October, 
uh, with more detail, which we will share. But what I'd like to do now is um, just show a short video that we put together so you can actually hear from some of the people who um, received the grant and um, benefited from 